and we are ready to go. Here we are in Bramlage Coliseum for our second round action in the NCAA Women's Tournament. Colorado, the number five seed with the first possession, Jalen Sherrod with the ball. And Colorado finished tied for fifth in the Pac-12 this year. They lost in the quarterfinals to Oregon State and did not get to host. They want to see if they can make up for that here in Manhattan. Kansas State right away going inside. No, but they will set it up. So much experience in both of these lineups as we'll see how much that comes into play. Aoka Lee keeping it up high, gets her own rebound. First basket of the game. Yeah, Von Lee's not going to be able to help. She's got to stay home. And a traveling call in the backcourt on Colorado. Well, you see, Kansas State is going to put full court pressure just to dis delay. They're really concerned about Sherrod going coast to coast. So it gives Kansas State the basketball. Gabby Gregory coming off a 22-point game in that win over Portland. She and Aoka Lee both over 20 points. First time for Kansas State doing that. Two players over 20 points in the NCAA tournament since 05. Another paint point for Kansas State. Yeah, really important for them to establish paint points as well. Colorado 17th ranked team in the country. Kansas State 15th. Three to form and missing that. Her next three-pointer she makes will set the all-time record men's or women's in Colorado history. Gabby Gregory missing that one. And Colorado with the ball. That's the leading scorer for Colorado on the year. Von Lay, she misses. Welcome to Bramlage Coliseum, a sold out Bramlage Coliseum for Colorado and Kansas State. First basket of the game for the Buffaloes as Jalen Sherrod, who leads this team, goes coast to coast for the first basket. Kansas State up early four to two as they have gone into the paint for their first couple of baskets of the game. It's the four or five matchup as the ball is swatted away, 14 seconds on the shot clock, along with Holly Warlick. I'm Brenda Van Lingen, and we expect both these teams to pound it in the paint. Von Ley going to the bench here, and that means Whitaker into the game to try to defend Aoka Lee, the All-American inside. Well, they've got two solid post players inside, so that's what they need to do, but K-State is doing a great job of attacking the glass right now. Gabby Gregory on the inbounds play drives to give the Wildcats a four-point lead. And we'll see Colorado really patient with their offense, trying to get a great look. Nice pick and roll. Whitaker missing that one. Kansas State finished third place in the Big 12. They lost to Texas in the Big 12 semifinals. Of course, Texas, a number one seed. And Whitaker called for the foul, trying to defend Aoka Lee inside. It's just a handful to try it to is. defend Aoka Lee. Well, Colorado's trying to make sure she doesn't get to the block. And then you see Whitaker just power, power, just trying to <laughs> let her. It's a, it could have been a takedown. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's like you want to try to keep her away from the block, yeah. and it's just so hard to do. As Gisela Sanchez checks into the game for Gabby Gregory, and K-State will have another inbounds play here early. Well, I, I just think Aoka Lee, she's old school. She doesn't stray far from the lane and shouldn't. That's her strength. Quay Miller reaches around, and then Gisela Sanchez ends up picking up the foul for Kansas State, her first. Gisela Sanchez was a player who was out last year. Aoka Lee for Kansas State missed all of last year with a knee surgery that she was recovering from. Sanchez was supposed to play the center position, but she was out as well. So she's been a valuable player for Kansas State this year. 
as you're just joining us, Colorado, one of their first five here on the road in Manhattan. Miller spins at one for their first six. Colorado's going to really have to look for some outside scoring because Lee is taking up so much room defensively in the paint. Hard to get a shot off around the basket. Sanchez, no on the three-pointer. Well, these are two programs that were once conference rivals back in the old Big 8 Conference and Big 12. Then, of course, Colorado has been in the Pac-12 since the 2011-12 season. But next year, Colorado will be coming back to the Big 12. So these two teams will be conference opponents once again next year. you got to love it. And two very similar teams. They quit, they press, get up and down. And a whistle and another foul called on Charlotte Whitaker. It's her second, and she'll be replaced by Aronette Vonley. And Whitaker is trying to make her case, and J.R. Payne says, go back to the bench. Yeah. Well, I think she's trying to understand what she's exactly doing. And she doesn't, she needs to stop fouling. <laughs> They've got Lee set up in that lob position she likes so well. Couldn't score at that time. That's just a miss because it was wide open. There was no help side on the backside. Colorado off to a slow start on the road. Nice reverse spin by Quay Miller. Nice. Pull, pull Lee away from the basket and it just posted up the other forward. Miller was all Pac-12 honorable mention this year. She was all Pac-12 last year. As a missed three-pointer from Jalen Glenn, one of the Glenn Swit twins for Kansas State. Miller gonna go to work on Sanchez. Bullying her way in, she is fouled and she will be at the free throw line when we were at the top of their conference charts early, but then they both had a little bit of a slide at the end of the season. Well, I think it speaks volumes of, of how powerful both conferences are. Very difficult, got a lot of teams in, and, and so uh, just weathered the storm. And, and I know Colorado would have wanted to host, but K-State got that opportunity. Quay Miller, you saw her dad in the crowd as she makes both free throws to tie the game up. We're in the first quarter here at Bramlage Coliseum. We're sold out for this great 4-5 matchup between former conference foes and now future conference foes as K-State will inbound it from the sideline. Zayana Walker into the game for Kansas State. Kendall Weta as well as Sadler in the game for Colorado. Kendall Weta a terrific defensive player, had her career high in points in the first round win over Drake. There's Gabby Gregory, five on the shot clock. Nice D. And a shot clock violation. Yeah, great defense. Up, getting out, denying the pass in the lanes, pushing K-State away from the basket and causing a forced turnover. Weta with that career high 16 points. You know, we talked to J.R. Payne this weekend here in Manhattan. She just says, Kendall Wetter is the best defensive player I've ever coached, and she just needs to do what she does well. And then all she does is come through and get a career high in points as the ball is tied up down low, and it will be Kansas State possession arrow. Now, I, I like what Colorado's trying to do. They're trying to go inside. They just pick and roll here. You got to throw it high because Kansas does a great job of getting their hands on. K-State does a great job of getting their hands on the basketball. Colorado picking up full court. Zayana Walker, the redshirt freshman, transferred from Louisville after not playing her first year. She's from Wichita, Kansas. She's there with the basketball. Gabby Gregory playing in her last game here at Bramlage Coliseum. Throws that one away, not high enough to Aoka Lee. Here comes Sherrod. She will go in a hurry, but Lee blocked yeah. the shot. And with that blocked shot, K-State now has set a career record for a season's block shot as a team. And then how about that? Wow. As an exclamation point, Aoka Lee sticks it in. Yeah, I love 
Coach Mitty wanted him to attack the glass, attacking the glass, and then Aoka Lee's just cleaning up the mess and, and making an easy two. Yeah, and so Lee, Strott just can't, she can't take it in that far. Lee does a great job of using her arms, long length, and then attacking the basket, just cleans up that missed shot. And off the inbounds play, Frida Foreman hits a jumper from the baseline and ties it back up. I mean, that's what you want to do with this big crowd, this sold out crowd, hit those shots to quiet the crowd in these moments. Yeah, you, you, you need to. Just, just the crowds can get you as pumped up and as excited when you're away as you are at home. Von Lay with some great defense, not allowing Aoka Lee to touch the ball inside. Five turnovers now for Kansas State. Donley is the leading scorer on the year for Colorado. She misses that one. Serena Sundell with the block out and rebound. I, I, I like to look pulling Aoka Lee away from the basket. Gabby Gregory has the ball get away from her. Good defense from Sarah Rose Smith, the transfer from Missouri, who is in the game. Let's take a look again. Well, we're just Gre Gregory attacking the basket. Good job. I love the no call. I love the no call. This is a physical game. Let them play it out. Both these teams very used to playing in physical conferences, the Pac-12, the Big 12, Sundell missing that one. Nolan, the transfer from Michigan. Yes. That's what she does. She is number nine in the country. 45% from three-point range. Great cut. And a strong drive to the basket from Gabby Gregory. She's fouled by Vonley. That's her first foul. Just a great cut to the basket. A little give and go. Gives it to Lee. Lee had nowhere to go, and Gregory makes a good cut. Doesn't stand. Cuts off the ball. Headed to the free throw line. Gabby Gregory at the free throw line. All Big 12 honorable mention this year. Last year, when Aoka Lee was out for the season, she was all Big 12 first team. Her points are down, but her assists are up with Aoka Lee back. Well, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships as Gabby Gregory makes both free throws. What a tournament. There are so many great games today and tomorrow in the second round. Already off to a good start on the day. Freeman missing. Foreman, excuse me, Foreman, Frida Foreman with that miss. Duke got the victory. Big upset over Ohio State. Big upset. And, and that was in Columbus, Ohio. 81 to 77. So what a win. And this Colorado team beat Duke last year on their home court to advance to the Sweet 16. So Duke returned the favor to Ohio State this sure year. Did. Nolan, another three-point attempt. Got it. Colorado does a great job of finding who is hot, and Nolan is hot. That's two threes in a row for her. Inside the drive to the basket, Jalen Glenn gets some point paints for Kansas State. We're under a minute to go in the first quarter. Pulling Lee out away from the basket. Von Lay has a shot block. I, and I like Von Lay attacking the basket. She's got to go a little quicker. Got to try to get her around Lee, but I like that attack. She's got anywhere to go. Got to go towards the basket a little bit more, but Lee does a great job of blocking the shot. Nine seconds on the shot clock. No points so far from Von Lay. She's 0 for 3, the leading scorer on the year for Colorado. Three on the shot clock, and a turnover as Quay Miller stepped on the sideline. Talk about the experience for Colorado. Sherrod 
Quay Miller, Maddie Nolan, all fifth year seniors playing in what could be their last game, trying to advance to back-to-back -back Sweet 16s. Kansas State hasn't been to the Sweet 16 since 2002 as a program. Five seconds remaining in the first quarter. Sundell floater, got it! Get of defensive stops once today, and the crowd really gets into it. They love Gappy the Goat. We're ready to start the second quarter here in Manhattan, Kansas. It's all tied up between the Buffaloes and the Wildcats. Sherrod shifts gears and goes right to the rim and draws the foul. Serena Sundell picks up her first foul. Well, I think since Aoka Lee is out, Sherrod's going to go all the way to the basket, attack the basket, just challenge the defense, and she did a great job in drawing the foul. There's Aoka Lee on the bench. You know she won't stay there too long. And Sherrod misses the first free throw. Sherrod on the year, 13 points a game. She's all Pac-12. She is a fifth-year starter. Her grandma and mom are here in attendance. She grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, and wanted to go to a program where she could make a difference. And she certainly has, as she has led Colorado to three straight NCAA tournaments, including the Sweet 16 last year. She's been a great leader, just a smart young lady. Has about, is going to get her last degree, four degrees. Um, just plays hard with a lot of heart, a lot of effort. Well, working on two master's degrees, how about yeah. that? A lot of pressure on the ball for Colorado, making it tough to go inside. Good ball reversal, and then Lee leaves it short. Another good defense inside by Colorado. Absolutely, pushed her off of the block. Nolan misses that one. She already has hit a couple of three-pointers. Sherrod lines up for three. Miller all over the offensive board. That's what she does for Colorado. Yeah, and smart, kick it out. She was going to get ready to go up against Lee. Kick it out and give it Colorado another possession. Shot clock winding down, backdoor cut. Weta, extra pass, in trap. That's Aoka Lee's defensive presence. Oh, it's her presence, no question. Normally they would go up and have a reverse layup, but smart, but kick it out to a shooter. Taryn sides the freshman into the game, over to Glenn, too strong. And so far, Kansas State has not hit a three-pointer. Baseline look, too strong. We've had subs in and out for both teams. Both teams trying to settle in. You know this is just going to be a, a battle throughout. As both coaches are so good at making adjustments, we're just going to see it throughout the game. Taryn Sides, got it! First three-pointer of the game for K-State. Uh, it's going to be a little chess match. If Lee comes out, then Von Lay's probably going to come out. So they're, they're both just going back and forth, using their bench a lot, both teams. Herself, didn't take the shot, Weta. And Von Lay still scoreless as she's 0 for 4. But the ball reversal to the freshman, big shot for a freshman. It was a big shot and just left her open, really poised, really calm, knocks it down. And her dad actually tweeted the other day that he is going to be retiring from being a boys basketball coach out in Phillipsburg, Kansas, so that he can come watch Taryn Sides games throughout her next three years. Gabby Gregory got it. K-State doing a great attacking the basket, ball reversal, kicking it out, open threes. Seven points for Gabby Gregory coming off that 22-point game and the win over Portland and a turnover for Colorado. And 
so it's just a ball move. They kick it out, Gag Gabby Gregory. You just cannot leave her open. She's going to knock that shot down. And she actually decided on the goat for the gap goat. We just saw the student managers for Kansas State waving that goat, so they got another gap goat. And it was Gabby that was responsible for deciding they were going to use a goat because she loves goats. Love it. Yes. And she loves the dragon paint. You yes. saw her pump her fist there. And a timeout called by Colorado. Thank you. Yeah, Duke advancing to their first Sweet 16 since 2008 with that win over the number two seed, Ohio State. Yep. What a win. And Gabby Gregory's three is looking like some Nikki Fargus out there shooting the three. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> nice drive to the basket for Frida Foreman, who scores on the opposite side. That's That breaks the eight to nothing run. Kansas State is on, draws them within five. Riley Glenn, and Aoka Lee gets the rebound sitting on the floor, and it's a jump ball that will stay on this end. She can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So she gets tangled. Aoka Lee gets a little tangled up, and uh, got she, it. She's got such long arms, <laughs> she just reached out from the floor and grabbed it. Good hustle by both teams there. Aoka Lee. Two of five from the floor, held to just four points so far. The leading score for Colorado, Vonley, 0 for four. So it, we knew it would be a battle of post play, and they've kind of neutralized each other so far. And Lee has really stayed in the paint. Vonley's had to come out, and she's taken a couple of jumpers at the free throw line. Aaron Sides hit that first three-pointer for K-State coming off the bench. Somehow that pass got through to Briley Glenn. Great reversal, trying to get the ball to one side, pivots, and the defense was starting to shift and gave the opportunity for an easy two. Too strong for Sadler, and Lee rebounds it. I like that look by Sadler. Just didn't go in, but I like that screen and roll. Karen Sides missing, missing that one. Let's look back at Taryn Sides setting up that pass to Briley Glenn. Just reverses, gets the defense to shift, puts the ball on the money. And really easy bucket for her. Diana Walker into the game. Serena Sundell comes back for Kansas State. Colorado has Kendall Weta at the point guard position, shifting Sherrod over the wing. To Mia Sadler, number two in the game for Colorado as well. Sherrod so quick to the basket. Cut off by Sundell that time. Quay Miller. Uh, Von, Von Lee's got to go to the basket. Five seconds on the shot clock. Three. Miller goes up. Got it. Yes. Love that. Colorado doesn't panic. The shot, they get the ball down in the shot, the, deep in the shot clock, and they just keep grinding, keep playing. I mean, that's the experience of this team. As Sherrod knocks that one out of bounds. And we've got Iowa twice this year. They split. And they've beaten them twice in the last three times. As K-State with a nice inbound play to set up Eliza Moppin on that shot. Just threw it up. Moppin went to get it. Love it. Set play. So whether it's Iowa or West Virginia, Iowa, of course, the number one seed as Von Lay finally gets her first basket of the game for Colorado. But it's going to be interesting because this Colorado team has some big wins. They docked off the defending national champion LSU at the beginning of the year. They have wins over Stanford, over USC as well. They, they have big wins, but so has Kansas State. So you know whoever comes out of this pod is going to make whichever their next opponent is look over their shoulder as another three-pointer goes down for K-State. Yeah, two, two really experienced teams that have played a lot of basketball, started young as freshmen, and now they're seniors and juniors. And so 
a lot of experience right now. Biggest lead of the game for the Wildcats. Kendall Weta knocks down a three. Big shot for Colorado. Really smart. Von Ley now is posting up because Aoka Lee's out, and they had, were a little concerned about her, and then they knocked down the three. So Kansas State snuck Eliza Moppin into the game for Lee on that last inbounds. That was her first time in the game, and she got that inbounds pass. How about that? Sabrina Sundell hits the three and is fouled, has a chance for a four-point play. Wow. Sundell just wide open. You just cannot leave her open. Serena Sundell, all Big 12 first teamer. She shoots 54% from the field, and she's a guard. She's a point guard, and she shoots 54% yeah. from the field. Yes. And add to that 37% from three point range. So just a tremendous shooter. And she completes the four-point play. She, she gets set, Brenda. She doesn't move her feet. She knows what you're going to do. She takes people fly at her. She makes and finishes the shot. Conley, beautiful Great. position. Great pass. Bacon, Drake, no one put it where she needed to put it. Conley just pivots, gets the two. Kansas State. Was a little cold from three-point range early. They missed their first three from distance, but they're four of their last five. And Sundell has it stripped by Sherrod. Watch out. Watch out. Sherrod is going to come all the way to the rim and draw the foul. She is so, so fast. This is the first time she's really gotten out in the, in the lane. But then you see Nolan. Yeah. Lee's out, what do they do? What they're supposed to do, get the ball inside. Von Lee with that score, but Jalen Sherrod at the free throw line. There's Aoka Lee checking back in. Sherrod, you see that mask on her face? She broke her nose second to the last game of regular season against Washington. Went out, only played 18 minutes in that game, ended up having to come back in that game because Washington was closing in the fourth quarter and had to play after she had just broken her nose. She looks a little bit like a superhero. She, she is a superhero. She is. Absolutely. Yeah, she draws Colorado within five. Will over skill is the mantra for Jalen Sherrod. She is all over Serena Sundell. Quick hands. Gabby Gregory is pushed from behind by Sarah Rose Smith. Yeah, and Rose just needs to get up towards the ball a little bit more. Just a little bit of an unnecessary foul. Got to call it. It was too physical. Sarah Rose Smith with her first foul. It's the third team foul for Colorado in the quarter. Von Lang with another nice. steal. Here comes Sherrod. Watch out. Nolan, three-pointer up yes. and good. And Kansas State has to call a timeout as Colorado on a 7 to nothing run. Big answer for the Buffaloes. And Nolan's knocked a couple of threes down, threes down in transition. So a 7 to nothing run for Colorado followed up an 8 to nothing run that Kansas State had had. And then a foul inside on Aoka Lee. <laughs> and she reaches down and pulls Jamia Harris up off the floor after the foul. She about looked like she was going to flip Harris over her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and you see her teammates. She lifted her up like bounced up like toes. Like you were in my way. So <laughs> I'm sorry I fouled you, but I'm going to yeah, pull you up oops. off the floor anyway. My bad. Lee picks up her first foul, but she has not scored here in the second quarter. Nolan can't get that one to go. And Riley Glenn chases it down. Nice look. Jalen Glenn, number three. So the twin sisters, Jalen is number three. Riley is number five there in the corner. They're three-year starters for Kansas State along with Serena Sundell. And another turnover. Von Lay is making it so difficult to go inside the lead. I, it shows her foot speed, her footwork. And the only way you 
got to deny Lee the basketball. You can't let her deep bury you, and Von Lay's doing a great job of getting around and getting the steal. She's got six now, Von Lay, and she ties it up. A nine to nothing run for Colorado. Nice defense. Von Lay gets a hand on it again. Crowd not happy that Aoka Lee went to the floor, but that's just two strong post yeah, players that, battling inside. Uh, uh, Von Lay's doing a great job of getting around and getting your hand on the ball. Nice pass inside, but it was tied up by Serena Sundell. It will stay on this end. Possession arrow, seven seconds. Yeah. Von Lay. Great defense and offense. Yeah, she's just doing a great job of getting out in the passing. Her footwork, she's so quick, Brenda, to get around. And here she just goes. She didn't touch her. Aoka Lee got off balance a little bit. Von Lay has seven steals in this game already. That's a career high. As she has used her quickness to get around Lee and deny the passes inside. Five on the shot clock. Foreman. Puts the ball on the floor, flips it up overhead, no good. And Kansas State could get the last shot of the half here with just 12 seconds remaining. Gabby Gregory has it almost stripped away, but Sherrod commits the foul. Gabby Gregory holding the side of her face. That's her first foul. So two seconds on the clock. Yeah, just just came across. Ooh, tough call. Looks like they banged cheeks together. Yeah, they did. All right, so two seconds on the clock here in the second quarter. Kansas State had had their biggest lead of the half when they were up by nine. Colorado comes back with a nine to nothing run to tie it up. And Kansas State with a chance here to take the lead before halftime. We got to throw, lob it into the... And it's knocked out of bounds, 1.1. 1 .1. What were you looking for, lob for what? Yeah, I, I, would, I would anticipate lobbing for Lee. You don't have a lot of time. You got to catch and shoot. 1.1 seconds now. Sundell off the body of Colorado. What a play by Serena Sundell. She threw the ball off the Colorado defender, grabbed it, scored, and was fouled. And she has a chance here with point one remaining after maybe the play of the tournament so far. <laughs> Doesn't complete the three-point play, and that'll do it, but Kansas State Leads by two here. Here in the first half with nine points. So Kansas State with the first possession of the second half. The winner will advance to the regional two in Albany. They will play the winner of Iowa and West Virginia who plays tomorrow as Frida Foreman with a shot block. Yeah, and he comes in and Glenn just comes in and perfect timing for Foreman to block the shot. And you see in the background, Gabby Gregory is holding her eye somewhere in that play, got hit in the face. She's trying to gather herself. Gabby Gregory had a terrific first half as well, nine points, playing in her last game at Bramlage Coliseum. Aoka Lee again has that one swatted away. This time there were two defenders. And there's only three seconds on the shot clock for K-State. There's where Gabby Gregory got hit. The uh, Quay Miller reached in. Okay, only three seconds on the shot clock. The lob inside gets knocked away again. And we're gonna see the, they did, they checked with the official scorer. They did turn on the clock and shut it off. It may be intense, you don't see it on the screen. Nice cut nice. and nice pass to set up the shot for Briley Glenn. Yeah, just a little misdirection and then comes across on the backside of the basket for an easy bucket. 
So if you weren't with us in the first half, Kansas State led by as many as nine. Colorado came back with a nine to nothing run. Kansas State scored right before the half. And then Kansas State scored on their first possession. Nolan picks up her first foul there. And Kansas State will inbound it on the baseline. I like they're pulling. They pull Lee out and Sherrod attacked the basket, missed, missed the, the layup. And Nolan, it's too far away from the basket. You let that go. Kansas State on their home court as a number four seed. And that's blocked again yeah. by Von Lay. Miller going to work on Gabby Gregory, double teamed, kicks it out. Great help by, by Lee. Conley going to put it on the floor. Yeah, that is not happening. And a jump ball. Possession arrow stays here. Colorado with seven on the shot clock. You, you got to pull Lee away from the basket a little bit more if you're going to attack her. And Lee, she's so big and strong and lengthy. Just, just does a great job of going straight up. That's tough to, that's, that's tough to score over. Aoka Lee is the all-time shot blocker in K-State history. As on the inbounds play, Foreman was fouled by Gabby Gregory. That's her first. And it was on the shot, so it will send Frida Foreman, the 5'11 senior from Denmark, to the free throw line. Honorable mention, all Pac-12, makes the first free throw. A 92% free throw shooter. Her mom and dad here from Denmark. Her dad was the coach of the Danish national team and coached her mom. Her sisters also have played on the Danish national team. And they are here in Manhattan, Kansas, cheering on Frida. As Frida makes both free throws, she's got six points on the day. Miller with a steal to Sherrod. And she is fouled by Serena Sundell. Boy, Colorado does a great, they're getting in the passing lanes and then attacking the basket. Sherrod drawing the foul. So that's the second foul on Sundell. Colorado already has 10 steals in this game. Yeah, I, just, I can't say enough about their anticipation, their footwork getting around the player, not not fouling on the pass to the offensive player. So great job defensively. Jalen Sherrod at the free throw line makes the first 78% free throw shooter. She is third in the Pac-12 in assists per game. She leads Colorado with 13 points per game. And she completes that free throw and has seven as her mom and grandmother look on. All tied up here in Manhattan, Kansas. Aoka Lee working hard to try to establish position against Aronette Von Lee, and she finally touches the ball. Great pass. Lee was really smart and lifting a little bit into the middle, and ball found her, and easy two. Lee averages over 20 points a game, just six so far. She didn't score in the second quarter. That's her first here in the third. Glenn Watch with out. a steal. Sherrod chases her down, and then Glenn misses, and a foul called on Jalen Glenn. She was disrupted by the speed and Ooh. hustle of Sherrod. I <laughs> That was a just a burst out of a cannon to come in and, and save the easy two-point layup. Wow. What hustle from Jalen Sherrod. Miller says shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Quay Miller was posting up, but she looked at Jalen Sherrod and she said shoot it, shoot it. So let's look back at that defense by Sherrod. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that was it. She started off from the free throw line on this end. Miller picks up her second foul. 
A jump ball, possession arrow, Kansas State. This Colorado team is a great defensive team. When you look at what they've done in the Pac-12, they're number two in the Pac-12 with just under 10 steals a game. They're number two in turnovers forced and number three in turnover margin, and they are bringing their defense to disrupt the Wildcats. They just play with great position. They play with their feet, they play with their hands. Sundell misses that three. And then Sherrod pushes in transition. Maddie Nolan! She had three three-pointers in the first half. The transfer from Michigan. Quay Miller going to work. Double teamed. Blocked. Quay Miller looking. Good patience. Oh, Miller and Sherrod finishes. <laughs> Quay Miller, very smart, gets up, gets the block, comes in, collects herself. Look at the D, great D, no foul, collects, doesn't go up. Yeah, you can't go up. And then a basket cut, and Sherrod just goes side to side, and she's so good at just lateral movement as well. Jalen Sherrod, as we look at Miller, just a terrific amount of patience to deliver that. Sherrod was trained by Otis Leverett, a former NFL player, and she just plays with a toughness. Look at her top speed this season, over 17 miles an hour. We saw that on display when she chased down Glenn. And then Vonley almost gets a rebound, but Aoka Lee knocks it off her leg. Hustle plays yeah. on by both teams. Every possession counts. And you, you, it's it's all on the line. And both these teams are playing so hard, both on both ends of the court. This game has been tied six times. Kansas State, this program has not been to the Sweet 16 in over two decades, since 2002. Jeff Mitty, 0-3 in this game in his time as the head coach for Kansas State. They are looking to get to that next round. Sundell passes Glenn at the shot clock buzzer too long. Good look, a great look. Colorado, on the other hand, they advanced to the Sweet 16 just last year. They did that on the road at Duke, and they want to do that on the road today in Manhattan, Kansas. And that's about as clean as a look as Von Lay's going to get right now, just about five feet away from the basket face up because she's really struggling right now to score over Aoka Lee. See what's at stake? Nice post up by Quay Miller. Jalen Glenn all by herself and they're going to call a foul on Sanchez. Yeah. Her third. You know, a lot of people don't like that call, but it's the right call. She set herself up, and the offense seems to not see the defense in front of them. And, and right there, you got to call the call, the play. Sherrod, and there's Sherrod using her quickness again, right? She just yeah. hustled over, got right in front of her to draw that foul. She, she also she helped the official out too. She had the charge sign laid on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Kansas, what a Kansas State already with five team fouls here in the third quarter and we're not even to the five minute mark. Von Lee trying to go to work on Lee. Lee has two fouls and she disrupts that one. Lee's presence just it makes you adjust your shot and you don't get a clean look. Sundell sees the right side of the lane open and Sherrod picks up the foul this time. That's her second foul. Yeah. Looks like she got popped. Yeah. Oh. A foul called on Sherrod. You see that mask. And, and we got a, a good tip from our colleague Shimmy Gray Miller. I love this. That mask was actually designed by a former women's basketball player from Virginia. So Maddie Nolan has been selected 
to shoot the two free throws because on an intentional foul you can select because Sharon actually had to go out also after she was popped in the face. And Maddie Nolan makes both free throws. First lead for Colorado with those free throws since they led 15 to 14 in the second quarter. And they get the ball. Sadler into the game, they kick out. Nolan with the quick release. In and out, and Sanchez with the board. Yeah, I like the ball movement. I like the shot selection from Nolan. You know, it's so fun that it was, it's been a long time since these two have been rivals. They played in the Big 8 Conference back in the day against one another. They played in the Big 12. They have not played since 2011. And there's already a rivalry forming, right, in yes, this game. Absolutely. You can feel a rivalry because so much is, is on the line. Aoka Lee just picked up her third foul. Make a difference, and she certainly has as the leader on this team. Three NCAA tournaments in a row as we come back to action. Von Lay making her free throw. And that gives her seven points. These are her first attempts at the free throw line. She's three of ten from the field. She and Aoka Lee, the All-American from Kansas State, have been going at it. And Kansas State in a little bit of foul trouble. And both Sundell and Lee on the court. Lee missing that layup after Kansas State finally able to get her the ball. Yeah, that was a great look. Just shot it a little short. It's been a battle on the post as Von Lay and Aoka Lee, two strong post players, have really made it tough on one another. And Lee, with three fouls, goes up and blocks that one. Risky for Kansas State. Yeah, I'm sitting here. Von Lay, you, you, she's got to either take that jumper or kick it out because she's not going to go one on one with Lee and, and probably nine times out of ten shoot over her. All-time shot blocker in K-State history is Aoka Lee. Five seconds on the shot clock. Quay Miller pulls up, missing. And what a hustle play from Kendall Weta because Lee rarely brings the ball down and didn't bring it down too far, but Weta was right there to grab it. Yeah, great. Just she goes, pursues the ball, but brings it down. And that's what little guards, little pesky guards do. <laughs> they tie you up. A little pesky guard. Pesty. Were you a pesty guard? No. No, I, I was kind of a forward, but, <laughs> you know, I just was out there to shoot. You were a shot blocker. <laughs> I, I didn't play much defense at all, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> How about that move by Tamia Sadler and gives Colorado a five-point advantage. You, on the other hand, Holly, I had a little research done on you, and I don't even know if you know this or not. But in your career as an assistant coach, associate head coach, and head coach for Tennessee, as Lee gets a nice little hook shot, you in the NCAA tournament, you had 116 wins against 27 <laughs> losses. That, that is a hell of a career, my friend. Well, and as I'm a so player, glad that, you're by my side. That's a player, you just, you're real smart, and you figure out who to get the ball to. Trish Roberts, Cindy Brogdon, I mean, you figure it out. And a foul come in. But that's your coaching record. You yeah. were a part of so many great teams yeah. at the University of Tennessee. You know what it's all about to win in these NCAA tournament games. And what, you, what are you seeing right now from Colorado that's given them the lead? Well, first of all, I had a great opportunity to play uh, and, and coach under Pat Summit. So, look, great teacher. And it's just, you got to keep your composure here. It, 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 this game is a game of runs. And so are you going to weather the runs? Or are you just going to panic? and let that other team just keep going. So we'll, we'll, we got, we need to see what K-State's uh, gonna do with this opportunity. Sundell short on that shot attempt. She had 11 points in the first half, hasn't scored in the second half. And a quick basket by Tamia Sadler, biggest lead of the game for the Buffaloes. Now that's how you score against Lee. You, you attack her, she didn't even have time to turn around. 
And a timeout for Kansas State. And the contingent of Colorado fans that have made their way from Buffalo. Rod. Yeah, Saria Sundell's been involved with some really interesting plays in this game. Let's talk about that. She was fouled on a three-point shot as Colorado gets the steal. They're going to get another layup. No. Good hustle by Sundell. And then a foul called on Sadler. Oh, wow. Boy, a missed opportunity for K-State. And that's going to be a free throw as Kansas State's in the bonus. Yeah, great hands on the ball and attacking and probably should have come on the, the, the right side of the basket. Just comes over her back. So Sadler picks up the foul. Walker's at the free throw line. I'm going to go back to Sundell real quick. Serena Sundell had a three-point shot that she was fouled on in the first half. So she had a four-point play. She also had a play at the end of the second quarter where she threw the ball off of the defender. It bounced back to her, and she scored right before halftime to give Kansas State the lead. But here in the third quarter, she gets that intentional foul call when Sherrod reaches in on her, and that kind of swung the momentum back to Colorado. So she's been involved in some really key plays in this game. And she, I mean, she was she was open. They left her, Colorado left her open early. And then they, they, they figure out a way how to stop her in, in this, this third quarter. Block shot by Lee. Gabby Gregory airmailed that one. Gabby Gregory made a three-pointer in the first half. She's got nine, second behind Serena Sundell in this game. Aoka Lee has eight for K-State. Into the game for the Buffaloes, Frida Foreman who has six points. Real balanced scoring right now for Colorado as they're led by Maddie Nolan with 11. Sadler using the screen. Yeah, really smart. They needed pulling Lee out. They needed somebody to hit that little mid-range jumper. Eight-point lead for Colorado, their largest of the game. Aoka Lee kicks it out to Walker. Walker, no. I like the look, got a good look. Sadler with the ball in her hands has scored the last eight and she assists on that one. Sad, great job of Von Lee burying Aoka Lee in the paint, doing, it, the, doing her work before the ball got there. That's what made it easy. Besides that, she hasn't been able to get a shot off inside. Aoka Lee calling for the ball inside, trying to work hard on on lay. Under a minute to go in the third quarter, the Buffaloes with a 10-point lead, a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line. Inside out, no, Walker missing the last two shots for the Wildcats, both from three-point range. Smart play, Colorado pulled it out, used the clock. Got a 12-second difference between the shot clock and game clock. And again, Sundell playing with three fouls. She and Lee both, these closing minutes of the third quarter. Gabby Gregory fighting with it for the ball with Lee. Six seconds left in the quarter. Great hands. Miller gets it up and throws it <laughs> over the backboard. But she didn't allow Kansas State a shot. Well, That's we, a lot of cookie. We appreciate L, our producer, going and getting that for us. We have had a great time here in Manhattan, and we've had a good game here as Kansas State led by two at the half, and Colorado outscored them 19 to seven in the third quarter, and are just playing more physical at this point as they are trying to go to back-to-back -back Sweet 16s. There, we're here. In the regional two in Albany, the winner of this game will advance and play the winner of Iowa and West Virginia that plays tomorrow. Yeah, again, Colorado's getting their hands on a lot of basketballs. They're, they're tipping, uh, their defense is so solid. And, and let's see if K State can capitalize on this unforced turnover by Colorado. And what does Kansas State need to do? They were held to just seven points in the third quarter. They were frustrated by the physical defense. There they get the ball to Lee, who's double teamed, and then a foul called 
on Colorado. That's on Miller. That's her third. Well, it, it, just be patient. They, they, they've got to find a way to get some easy baskets, Case, And then come down here. you got to get some stops. you got to get some, some gaps down here. Kansas State was just 3 of 15 from the field in the third quarter. Jalen Glenn muscling her way through, back irons it. Yeah, I, well, I like that look. She's around the basket, taking a high percentage shot. Ball just didn't fall. Conley taking it at Lee, who disrupts it again. Lee did a great job of not fouling, making him shoot. That one gets away from Gabby Gregory. Can I say, just slow down a little bit. It appears they're just, they're rushing, they're playing a little too fast right now. 18 turnovers for the Wildcats. And she's got to drive to the basket. Sherrod, no. So no scoring yet here in the fourth quarter. Colorado leaving the door open a little bit for Kansas State. Nice. And Lee takes advantage. Well, there's no help. You, you got to go out and, and guard Sundell and, and uh, just easy pass inside. 10 points, 11 rebounds for Sundell. The 11th double-double of the season, the 60th of her career. Foreman, well, a lot of contact there, but Jalen Glenn comes away with it. This time, Sherrod King gets up. J.R. Payne calls the timeout and lost those games. Yeah, well, and, and we, we need to really pay close attention. And it's about their shot selection. In those games, they didn't have great shot selection, and so we need to follow that this quarter and see where it leads them. So that's why you got to think J.R. Payne called that timeout. Make sure everybody is on the same page. Way Miller. Good rebound by Whitaker in the ball game, and then a jump ball. It will be possession arrow this end, but Sundell kind of landed on Charlotte Whitaker, who is slow to get up. Yeah, I, I love Whitaker's effort. I love her effort here. She goes, pursues the basketball. You can't put the ball down. You, you just got to chin the basketball, kick it out. And you can see and she's in some pain as Serena Sundell landed right on her head. Beautiful play. What a block. Again, you got to move Lee. She's a great shot blocker. She just great timing, long arms. Got to move her. Riley Glenn missing that one. K-State 4 of 14 from beyond the arc. Now there you go. Great, great vision by the by Colorado because there was a mismatch in there. Gregory had the post player. Foul was called on Gregory, her second. We mentioned that Kansas State four of 14 from three point range, but they're 0 for six here in the second half. advanced to the Sweet 16 last year when they beat Duke in overtime on their home court. And yeah. that's a three-second call. Sherrod just lost track of where she was. Yeah, she got to shoot it. If you get that close and you don't have it, just throw it up. You, you, you just got to throw it up. She said, on me. Yeah. She realizes that was her error. She's going to come out and Kendall Weta into the game. I, I love Sherrod's defense, but K-State's doing a great. They're backing off of her, and she's not shooting the ball outside very well. So they're, they're, they're putting in a, another shooter to, to try to take advantage of the of k State style of defense right now. Leto had a career-high 16 points yesterday in their first-round win over Drake. It opens up on the right side for Gregory, but she bounces off Miller and just throws it up. A nice low call, just a little, just a bump. 
It's been physical. It has. Yeah. And, I, and the, the game's physical, Brenda. It is, it's, it's how she, it's played. Neither team have made a three-point shot here in the second half. That one gets away as great defensive effort from Briley Glenn. Yeah, you gotta get, you gotta pick up the you can't dribble the basketball, you gotta pick it up. Good stops, good stops for, for K-State right now on this on their defensive end. Kansas State has been so good here at home this year. That's the the benefit and the reward for a good season being a host. They're 16 and 1 at home. Their only loss as they get a shot clock violation before Gregory got that one up. Their only loss at home was their last home game of the year against Iowa State. And yeah, Gabby Gregory still had the ball in her hands yeah. when the shot clock went off. Great defense by Miller. Quay Miller's, she's been phenomenal on the defensive end. She's she forced Gregory to have a little shot fake and then uh, shoot, and uh, yeah, she didn't get it off. See so the officials. Last game, 13 years ago. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the start of a big rivalry. You can just feel it in the air. Colorado has not scored this year this quarter and they get a a foul on an illegal screen on Aaronette Vonley. Yeah Vonley stay still because Sadler's doing a great job of using the screen and that's who you need to have the ball in her hands right now on Colorado on offense. So Colorado hasn't scored this quarter but Kansas State's only scored four points. Another defensive swat by Vonley. That, she's, she's been phenomenal today. She didn't steal it, but she knocked it away, and Colorado came away with it. Weta is a, is a threat to score. I like this. I like right here with, with Sadler. Using the screen, I like that shot right there. She's really been money. Misses that one. The ball gets knocked around. Miller goes to the floor. And it looks like Serena Sundell is on the floor on the baseline. And it will be Colorado basketball, 20 seconds on the shot clock. I love bigs on the floor. <laughs> you not love it. Naoka Lee goes to the floor. Aronette Vonley goes to the floor. This is when you know the game. It, it's important. Just both of them. And so they say that Sundell is touching the ball when she's out of bounds, so it will be Colorado basketball. Yeah. And Vonley fouled by Aoka Lee. That's her fourth foul with 423 remaining. It will send Aronette Vonley to the free throw line. Just runs her off at baseline screen and yeah, uh, Aoka Lee was late, so she chose to foul. Wait, a lot of players could not have withstood the Aoka Lee coming like that, but Aronette Von Lay, one of the strongest players in the NCAA in women's basketball, they've actually tested her hamstrings. She's in the 99th percentile in hamstring strength. She had a squat of 455 and a double rep bench press of 225. That's how strong this young woman is. She misses both free throws, but Quay Miller bails her out with the offensive rebound, and J.R. Payne calls the timeout. The balance scoring from J.R. Payne's team, but they haven't scored yet here in the fourth quarter and still haven't. Gregory yeah. Ooh. in and out. Oh, I thought that was in. The, the angle where we were, I thought that was down. She hasn't scored in this half, Gabby Gregory or Serena Sundell. Under four minutes to play with a trip to the Sweet 16 in Albany on the line. Miller, the first basket of the fourth quarter for the Buffalo. Yeah, Miller just m literally muscled that shot up.
K-State has some work to do against this tough Colorado defense. Gregory, will she get this yeah. one? She does. Yeah, set play running her off the screens. This is Gabby Gregory's last game at Bramlage Coliseum. It could be Aoka Lee's last game. She's played four years, has not announced yet whether or not she is coming back. Colorado leading this game by five. And a double dribble on Sadler. Great defense by, by K-State. Sadler, you, you, you can't, Colorado really has a tendency of getting too deep under the basket. You got Lee underneath there. You're not gonna do anything with it. Gabby Gregory missing that one. Great look, good set play off the break, good look. Sellout crowd here at Bramlage, trying to make some noise while the Wildcats play defense. Sadler directing traffic, pulls up, yeah. got it. That's her shot, that's her shot off the screen. Mid-range jumper, she can make the plays, and she has today. 10 points now for Sadler. And they're just gonna try to run, get off the three. They either go inside or they're gonna shoot a three. Glenn in traffic, tries to tip it in, and can't get it to go. God, it almost looked like Lee knocked it out of her hands. And J.R. Payne calling Kendall Weta over to call out the play. The our time is on the side of Colorado at this point. Jalen Sherrod still on the bench for the Buffaloes. But Weta running the point guard. Sadler comes and gets it. Hesitates. Puts her head down. Out to Miller, oh, short, yeah. and a shot clock violation, but the only good news for Colorado is they used the entire 30-second shot clock. Yeah, and, and really solid defense by K-State, forcing the, the shot clock violation. K-State needs to be in a hurry here. 113 remaining in the game. Nice cut by Glenn, missing, and she's fouled on the rebound. Was she fouled on the shot or on the rebound? As it is two shots on Miller, and that's her fourth foul. Jalen Sherrod checking back into the game. And Jalen Glenn at the free throw line as, what a what good work by Sadler as she goes to the bench with 10 points. You know, let's anticipate Glenn makes these free throws that, that K-State's going to jump into a full court for us. Kansas State's been to the free throw line just seven times in this game, but that missed their four of seven. On the other side, Colorado 12 of 17. Jalen Glenn makes that one, and it's a six-point ball game with 107 remaining. K-State picking up full court. Oh, just over the outstretched arms of Jalen Glenn. K-State has, yeah, they've got fouls to give here. So Jalen Glenn commits the foul. That's her second. It is the third team foul of the quarter. So they have one more to give. What's at stake in this game? Second straight Sweet 16 appearance. Second one in a row on the road for Colorado. First Sweet 16 appearance for Kansas State since 2002. Wow. Ooh, and that one almost got oh. stolen as Witta had a hard time getting the ball out of her hands and a quick foul on Walker. Yeah, that, that, that was lucky by Colorado. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Substitutions in, Aoka Lee comes into the game 
and Sundell for Kansas State. Foreman checks back in for Colorado. And Colorado, Colorado's got to get open, Brenda. They're having a hard time getting getting open here. They get the ball into Miller. And Abby Gregory has two hands on Miller, and that will send Quay Miller to the free throw line. It's the third foul on Gabby Gregory. Quay Miller, a 75% free throw shooter. She's two for two today. <laughs> Ray Miller connects on the first. Her dad looking on. She has been fantastic today. Nine points seven rebounds, a couple of assists, and clutch at the free throw line as she's four for four. Two big free throws. Gabby Gregory puts the ball on the floor and it slips out of her hands. And Sundell reaches in to send Frida Foreman, a 92% free throw shooter to the line. Boy, Colorado's just been, it, it just, the feel of this game, they've gotten their hands on a lot of balls on the defensive end, and they've made K-State rush. Frida Foreman makes the first. Longtime coach Sealberry, who had so much success at Colorado. I know watching from Sarasota, Florida, got to be proud of this group and the way they have played. She played a lot of games here in Manhattan, Kansas when they were in the same conference. And now Colorado up by 10. A lot of work to do for Kansas State. And then they step on the sideline. And Colorado can feel it right now. Kansas State still hasn't been back to the Sweet 16 since 2002. So much history in this program as Aoka Lee goes to the bench. She has played four years here. We don't know if she's coming back for a fifth year. This may be the last time the All-American is on the court. Gabby Gregory, a fifth year senior, also takes a seat. And Kansas State will send Foreman to the free throw line. What careers from those two young women. Gabby Gregory started her career at Oklahoma. She was an impact player for three years. She transferred here, was all Big 12 first team, all Big 12 honorable mention this year. And she is hoping she is not done yet as she comes back into the game. Aoka Lee set a single season record, a single game record with 61 points in a game two years ago. She's a four-time All-Big 12 first-teamer and an All-American. And again, we don't know if this will be her last game in a Wildcat uniform, but she was held in check by this Colorado defense today, scoring just 10 points. Foreman misses the second free throw. Kansas State in a hurry. Gabby Gregory, short on that attempt. And a jump ball call that will stay because Kansas State possession. 22.2 seconds remaining. I, I've, I've watched Gabby Gregory play. She, she's a competitor. She plays hard. She works hard. She's had a great career. Hand off to Sundell. Drives in, fouled on the shot with 17.8 seconds remaining. Colorado coming in on the road last year, defeating Duke on their home court to advance to the Sweet 16. This year, they come into a sold out arena here at Bramlage Coliseum. And checking into the game, Rebecca Dollinger, a senior, is going to take the place yeah. of Gabby Gregory. Yeah, I, I just, I feel for her. The coach's staff loves her. She's been a tremendous leader, and uh, it's been, she's been really fun to watch. 
She's getting the hug she deserves on the sideline. She has been a tremendous player in the Big 12 at both Oklahoma in the last two years at Kansas State. Heart wrenching for her as Sundell misses both free throws and that's just the way it's been here for Kansas State. Colorado wore them down and has outscored them 28 to 15 in the second half. And now it's time for our Capital One rewarding performance. When you talk about this second half performance, it was Tamia Sadler that really stepped up. Yeah, we talked about somebody had to step up, especially in the fourth quarter and hit big buckets, and she did just that. She attacked the basket. She really is great coming off the screen. She's got a really good mid-range jumper. All 10 points in the second half, and while we did that, Aoka Lee went to the bench. And again, we don't know if Aoka Lee will be coming back for a fifth year. She has that opportunity. She's the all-time shot blocker, the all-time leading rebounder, the all-time scoring average leader in K-State history. But will she be back for a fifth year? She said she'll decide after the season. As Colorado came in here and did their work, they were physical on defense. They were outstanding on offense. And the Colorado Buffaloes are going back to the Sweet 16 for the second. Listen up, I'm not to paint with words, a lyrical poet flying with the birds, pen in hand, mind full of dreams, writing rhymes that make souls gleam. From the ink on the page to the beat in my heart, I'm a wordsmith playing my part, spinning tales like a web of silk, crafting verses smoother than milk. I'm a poet, rhythm in my veins, ink in my pen, igniting flames from the depths of my soul to the stars above. I'm a poet, spreading peace and love. In the silence of night, my words take flight Painting pictures in black and white Metaphors dance, similarly sway In the world of poetry, I find my way from sonnets to haikus I explore the range in the realm of language Nothing stays the same, every stanza a journey Every line a tale in the universe of verse I never fail I'm a poet, rhythm in my veins Ink in my pen, igniting flames From the depths of my soul to the stars above I'm a poet, spreading peace and love So next time you hear my words, listen close For in each verse there's a treasure to enclose Storyteller, keeper of the flame in the world of rhyme, I'll forever reign.